This looks familiar. Oh, we have another mark on our hand. Let's see the similarities. Puro, okay. Now, this. Oh, so I got coins right there. How awesome is that? Medicinal herbs. Now, this is where it starts to get interesting, guys. There's a rune over there, which is really cool. As far as the river mouth and flooded district. Do not attempt to approach or destroy however, a river cross. However, any items recover. Let's put blank on. State property. Ooh, what's this? Now this is what I meant by I wanted to explore this place a little bit. Uh, because there's definitely some cool things that we can do. Um Okay, so we know it's there. Let's work our way down. Down, down, deeper and down. Bummer. Just gonna try and get some cheap wine. So we can't do that. There we go. Okay, so... Pouch, five bucks. Not much, but we'll take it. Shadow of Bit on Bitter Leaf. Finding my way by the feeble light of the dying fire, I saw her working. A large needle moved in her hand, following by precise, esoteric patterns. Knots and loops of seamstress craft from ancient days. Beneath her needle, his body clenched and shuddered, shaking the wooden table. A morbid fascination pushed me closer, until she turned her blank face towards me resting the needle in his flesh. With a refined tone, she addressed me. So you are the lover, I presume? You too have been unfaithful, and it is now your turn to be mended. What? Okay, cool. A Gaffer's Tale, Volume 2. After more than a quarter of a century, I'm done with whaling. Too broken to continue. I've seen all the corners of the aisles and made more coin than most men see in a lifetime, but it's all gone. I've lived through an emperor and watched his daughter take the throne. Fair young empress she was, but slain so young. Everything beautiful comes to die. I've eaten in every part of the known world and sailed in the loneliest waters you could imagine. I've seen the cliffs around Pandesia. Even the best of it doesn't give me an ounce of joy. The years come back across my dreams as a line of butchered bodies, long, sleek, and singing among the waves under the moonlight, only to be speared by ugly, weathered, scarred man who'd knife each other for a good pair of boots. Each year, I had less time to come home. My tongue forgot the language of small chatter, and those who lived in the cities thought me odd. My sister Nina hardly knew what to say to me during her visits. When she lost her business to the Lord Regent's crooked burster, I was a hundred miles east of Morlay, a gaff hand frozen from the sleet as we tracked the first bull whale we'd seen in months. I helped her as much as I could, but Nina died in the early days of the plague. None of it mattered. If I'm jaded and bitter, it's because this industry has taken away my dreams. The world has beaten me. Oh, I love it, man. This is just... That's interesting. Um, <laughs> they just they do a really good job of painting the picture of this. River traffic is forbidden from landing in the distillery district due to risk of infectious contact. Violators will be taken to the flooded... Gaffer's Tale, Volume 2. Oh. Wow, so I guess everyone's reading that book. Havelock. It's been days since our men were dispatched to sash weapons for Corvo in the sewer. They have not returned, so I can only hope that they succeeded in getting the packages delivered. Pierre has spent considerable time and resources making those things. If I could find a way to mass-produce them, the Dunwall Navy would secure its place as the dominant force on the globe. But back to Corvo. Can he actually break out of Coldridge, and if so, will he make his way here? I personally give him odds of 1 in 5. Corvo seems to have arrived in good shape. <coughs> Much better than I expected, given what I've seen of Coldridge Prison. He seems willing to work with us, and he shouldn't lack for motivation. The man has lost everything. We'll judge how he performs. And if I can, I'll find a way to test him personally. 
So he's gonna test me. Would it be jerk? Okay, anyways, I saw the gap the gaffer's tale volume one. So we saw we read the second one, but here's the, here's the first one. My sister Nina and I left Tivia together, saying goodbye to our aunt, the woman who had raised us since childhood, leaving behind our home city of Yarrow and the cold but beautiful white landscapes we'd always known. We boarded a ship for Dunwall. Our parents had left us with a sizable inheritance, and we spent half of this getting to the capital city, establishing a small import shop de dedicated to Tivian furs. Once I had helped Nina establish the business, I was free to pursue my dream. Signing on with the whaling ship was the most exciting thing I'd ever done, and I saw it as a means to an end. Someday I would captain my own crew and eventually own a fleet of similar vessels. With tears in her eyes, Nina kissed me farewell, and I did not see her again for many months. As an apprentice to the gaffer, I got to see the tracking and killing of great beasts up close. Nothing had ever fired up my spirit so, as the wind and pounding waves racing after a wounded whale, being pulled off by a skein of cables embedded in its thick flesh. I changed more in those first seven months than I had in the previous seven years. Whaling was beginning to put its mark on me so that Nina barely recognized me when I returned home, returned tan and sunny with muscle. Weather crease is already wrinkling the corners of my eyes, but she could see that I was filled with joy, having found my purpose. But we know we know how that ended up, which is kind of sad. Okay, Admir Admiralty in the fleet. While each of the isles has some form of naval fleet, none is more envied than that of Gristol. With its long, proud history of great ships and the admirals who commanded them, boys come of age in the city of Gristol, hoping to someday captain such a ship and family dynasties are made by those captains who track down infamous pirates or crush sedacious uprising as during the Morlay insurrection. In times of war and peace, Gristol continues to innovate at sea. The ship designs of Anton Sokolov himself now represent the highest standard in the whaling trade, allowing crews to haul their kill up over the deck and begin their butchery and processing, even as the ship returns to Dunwall. The crews can be seen working on their latest whale as the ship moves slowly up the Renhaven River coming to dock with one of the most powerful warehouse companies such as the Greaves Whaling House. Suspended in the rigging overhead and backlit by the setting sun, the silhouette of one of those creatures makes a moving sight as it cruises to its final resting place in the industrial heat of the capital city. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Did I clear space for Samuel then? If you like, but he won't use it. Why? He can't sleep in regular beds anymore, or that's what he says. Says he... <laughs> okay, I'm totally kidding. Totally kidding. <laughs> anymore, or that's what he says. Says he was in the Navy too long. Can you believe it? Oh. That pile of wood out there? It's a hobble he built from a rowboat. Where does Admiral Havelock find these people, I wonder? Oh, oh 50. I'll take it from this guy. Good day, Master Corvo. Oh, thank you. I'm a master. I'm a master. Master. Oh, where did this guy go? Oh, there he is. Are you a nobleman, Corvo? No one seems to know much about you. By your bearing, I'd say so. Lord Pendleton's great-grandfather took a Sokonan chambermaid to wife. On second thought, the story doesn't bear repeating. Even the finest blood can go bad here and there. There's a little Tivian blood in the Pendleton line. That's the worst anyone could say about them. I think it's come out in the brothers just a little bit. My lord Trevor's pure as the Empress herself, I'm happy to say. The Pendletons are quite wealthy, but they were noble long before that. You've heard rumors about the Pendleton mines being worked by slaves, I suppose. Never been there myself, and I refuse to believe it. They say Custis Pendleton made an improper remark to the Empress once, and you ejected him from a state dinner before asking who he was. Well done, I say. This plague has ruined the social season for all of us. <laughs> the social season? What a shame. Lord Pendleton Memoirs, Chapter 27. In my thirteenth year, the despised stepmother at last departed, and Pendleton Hall was again quiet. Although Father had by then sunk into deep depression, it was at this sensitive time that Waverly Boyle first entered my life. 
she who will be the source of many tender recollections to come. All right, what's up here? Just getting a whole bunch of. Oh. Okay, I'm going really high up. I bet you this is my room. Aha, it is. I was right. Where I'm going, I don't need stairs. Okay, I don't want to talk to him. I want to explore. Wee. Oh, how cool is this? I'll do the uh, the vision, and you can see the uh, the fish. Let's see the heart, though. Such laughter, and then they're singing the old songs, linking arms. But that was from a happier time. Deals are made here. Sometimes at the beginning of the wine, and sometimes the end of the is the point of a knife. Cool. So we just picked up another rune, and actually, again first thing that you want to do, at least if you're doing stealth in my opinion, would go for the, uh, oh, crap. Would be to go for the next upgrade for this. Um, so we're actually going to hold on to that. Before the sun rises, they toss any casualties into the river. Men or hound. They all go in. Not for the clues. So let's see, mission clues, mission items. See, they kind of want you to do vital. I, well, I guess you can use vitality. There's they no. I don't want to. Yep. Everything counts on me. They stood in a circle around the candles and cut their hands to form their alliance. The blood pissed as it touched the flames. Cool. So now I got, I got a bunch of cash. Uh, let's see. Let's see if uh, Pietro has anything for us. If not, we'll do a little bit more exploring. Havelock stopped in earlier, but I forgot what he wanted. He's waiting to see you, I believe. Piero's workstation key. Ooh, you know what? We're gonna explore a little bit. I don't know what's over here. This could spell certain death, but... But, this looks promising. Oh, I guess we could have always used that. Let's use enter. Oh, shoot. I meant to do that. Crap. Oh, well. I did not know that we could take this all the way up. Oh, let's go over here. The conspirators have found a safe home here. They take great care that they are not followed. Ooh. The Fugue Feast. I don't know if that's how you say it, but that sounds cool. 
At the end of every year, after the last day of the month of songs, we begin the Fugue feast. The new year has not started, and thus the time that follows is outsider. The count cal- outside the calendar. A period of celebration and feasting begins, during which the people abandon the very practices that keep them whole and healthy over the year. Many leave their homes euphoric with spirits or potent herbs. Some paint their faces or wear masks to conceal themselves as they pursue their passions without reservation. When the right cosmological signs are observed and it is time for the calendar to begin anew, the setting high overseers calls for the hymn of atonement and the Fugue feast ends. Families return to their homes, wives to their husbands, enemies put down their weapons from, and fires are extinguished. No complaint is given for those who have wronged others, deviated from ancient codes, or discarded oaths. For this time during the astrological alignment does not exist and is not recorded. The following day marks the new year, marked on the first day of the month of Earth, as it has always been. So you can basically kill everyone if you want. Elementary songs. History of the Isles. Geography of the Isles, the Seven Strictures, Litany of the White Cliff, Sayings of the Overseer. One day we'll get a few new books. Okay. Call to the Spheres, Volume 1. My stomach twists as the engines of the odd vessel roared louder. Louder. It was the creation of Orcado, the third perfect from the Academy of Natural Philosophy. He was exhilarated, savoring each of the small craft's undulations. Orchado pulled a lever, and a great gout of smoke surrounded us. The smell of burning whale oil grew unbearable as the machine propelled itself upward. I was too afraid to look through the window, which suddenly didn't feel thick enough. As it, knowing my thoughts, Overseer Bryn looked at me and smiled. Recite some of the litany, my pupil. It will protect your heart from the turpitude of the void on our way to the outer spheres. Oh, so this is a little bit of voodoo. Who do you voodoo, bitch? Um. Huh. Very interesting. Where's the other book? Once a child shows the proper inclination, he is marked. Overseers are assigned to study the subject surreptitiously in order to deter- determine whether this inclination is supported by cosmological conditions and other signs ongoing throughout the year. At the end of this cycle, those befitting further testing are removed from their homes some hours before dawn and must begin the march to an outpost outside the city. There, the children undergo ritual preparation and evaluation until the last night of the month of rain, when they will make a pilgrimage to White Cliff. During an elaborate ceremony, it is determined which of the children will become overseers and which must be put down. What? You guys are crazy. You guys are crazy. Okay. Well, that's kind of interesting. So over Overseer stuff is crazy. Oh, it's my... It's... We're back in my apartment. Oh, okay. Cool. The alien is sweet with honey. Oops, I meant to get like the taste of the river broth. Interesting, interesting. Let's talk to Havelock. Well, let's get down to it. Okay. First off, I know that assassination is dark business. But sometimes, good men have to do bad things to make the world right. Our purpose is clear. We want to restore Her Majesty's line by finding and putting Emily Caldwin on the throne. To those ends, we'll hide, act in shadow, Take them apart, piece by piece. Sounds good to me. Tonight, High Overseer Campbell dies by your hand. It won't be easy. He's protected by his overseers, an army of religious zealots. But if anyone can do it, you can. Your exploits are legendary. Campbell carries a private journal. Once you've eliminated him, get the journal, because we think it contains Emily's location. Recovering her is obviously critical, assuming she's alive. That's the gist of it. Remember our cause and strike true. We're counting on you. Yes, sir. Another thing. Campbell is holding a former overseer by the name of Martin. He's one of us. And if you manage to find him, give him whatever help you can. 
He's a master strategist, and he got caught working for our cause. It'd be good to have him back here at the Hound Pits. Okay, so locate Emily. But we can also rescue another guy. Which I believe is definitely something we will want to do. Where's... I want to see if there's anything I can get to... What do you got for me, buddy? What can I do for you? There we go. Uh, let's talk about upgrades. Ooh, we can get a rune. 500. Let's buy that. Bone charms capacity. Um, again, we already upgraded it to four. I don't think we're going to get that many in the first mission. I could be wrong. But we got this new rune, which is actually perfect because now we got two and we can upgrade this. And check this out, guys. Check this out. Now you can see, like, everything. It's so cool. Part of the Corvo. Hello. I'm Callista. I work here for Admiral Havelock. I'm sorry to intrude on your business, but this is important. I suspect you're going to kill the High Overseer. That wretched man. Yep. There's really no reason for you to listen to me. But my uncle, Jeff Kernow, still serves as captain in the City Watch. But he's a good man, and my only family. The chatter in servant circles is that Campbell just took delivery of an exotic poison. And I think I know why. My uncle's not corruptible like the rest of them. Campbell is going to poison my uncle. Do you think you could protect him? You used to do that, right? Before you had your current profession. Before you became an assassin. Yeah, spare... Ensure Captain Kerner survives the visit to the office. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but we're going to figure it out. Alright, cool. Alright, I think we're good here for now. Ready to go? Just give the signal. Uh, let's go then. Let's put on our mask. Uh, cool. The distillery district. It'll be a rough trip. It used to be to go straight up Clavering Boulevard, but now it's not so easy. Half the city's dead of the plague. The other half's fighting over what's left. City Watch still holds the bigger streets, and they've set up those wall of light checkpoints. Man walks through one of those and he ends up burned to a crisp. Everything not controlled by the city watch is gang territory. And there are the real odd birds living on the fringes like that Granny Rags. They say she's nuts. I don't know which is worse. Just take your pick. Hmm. So the City Watch holds Clavering Boulevard beyond the first wall of light. The Bottle Street Gang controls the side streets around Clavering Boulevard. Granny Rags lives in an apartment at the far end of Endoria Street. So, how should we do this? How do we do this? Yeah. Some health. Some enemies. Alrighty. So let's talk to Granny Rag. She sounds like the coolest person to go to. Look at all those flies. But, anyways, at this point, I'm going to call it a wrap, and I will see you guys in the next part. This has been Pitching Ace 88. Over and out.